Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Leo the Great, who was Pope and Doctor of the Church. And I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who never allow the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firmly founded on the apostolic rock, grant her, we pray, that through the intercession of Pope St. Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of lasting peace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. All glory belongs to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him, for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do, now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, One hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then to another he said, And you, how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Now write one for eighty. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the Gospel wash away our sins. You know, in today's Gospel reading, according to St. Luke, we have a story about a rather dishonest steward. His responsibility was to handle all the business affairs of his employer. However, he had been mishandling his employer's funds and was about to be fired. Immediately, the steward begins to think of his future. He does not have the strength to do manual labor, and to go begging would be a terrible loss of face. So he thinks of a strategy by which he can call in all his employer's debtors, and he reduces the amounts that they owe. The debts incurred were considerable, 100 measures of olive oil were equivalent to about 800 gallons or the yield of 450 olive trees, while 100 measures of wheat was equal to about 1,000 bushels or the yield of 100 acres. Very few farmers of that time would have had anything like that kind of land in Jesus' day. By doing this favor... And again, it's only a parable. The steward hopes to be able to find alternative employment with one of them. Surprisingly, his employer, far from being angry, praises the farsightedness of his corrupt steward. Whatever our interpretation, the point that Jesus is making is always the same. The steward acted with shrewdness and intelligence to guarantee his future. 
Jesus concludes by pointing out that the worldly are far more astute in providing for their future here on earth, the temporal life, than are those who are regarded as spiritual, the children of light. Jesus is in no way condoning the steward's dishonest and corrupt behavior. What he does praise is his clear-sighted preparation for the future. The lesson for us is very clear. If a man could do that for his earthly career, what about our future in the life to come? If we want to guarantee our future life with God, then we too need to take the necessary steps. Those steps are clearly laid out in the gospel and in general, they involve a life which is built on truth and integrity, on love, compassion, and justice with regard to the people around us. Our task is to work with God in making his will our own and in building up the kingdom. That's what it's like to be a true steward of God. If we do this on a daily basis, then we have nothing to worry about and our future is assured through Christ our Lord. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that comes to you, either through a verse or even just a small word that touches you and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you, how you may spiritually grow closer to him in friendship, something he deeply desires. Let us complete a divine reading now with a closing prayer. And let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the sacred truths you teach us, complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy. For even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in all ways. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please ring that bell and hit the subscribe all button and help support our channel. And share these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all.